But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Ephesians 4, 7. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm gone. Thank you, Lord God, for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord God, for my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace in our lives. We just ask, Holy Spirit, that we would have a greater revelation of that grace in our lives. That we would be motivated, moved, and propelled forward through your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I just declare over your life and home and health and prosperity in every area of your life, starting from the inside out. Glory to God in the name of Jesus. And uh, this morning, I just want to share with you a vision I had the other day about God's grace. Now, before I start telling you about this vision, I just want to just... Uh, have you close your eyes. Listen to this. You're out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's a vast ocean. And it's large. And you look around. Do you see any land if you're in the middle of this thing? No. All you see is a vast ocean. That's God's grace. You can't see the beginning. You can't see the end. It's just there. It's large. It's bigger than what you can imagine. And what I saw was bigger than I could imagine. Impossible, you say. No, it's not impossible. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. It was large. It was large. <laughs> so I just, I just thank the Lord for that. Now that's what I saw. I saw as I, as I was praising the Lord for His grace, His mercy in my life, I saw this huge expanse that looked like an ocean and I heard that's my grace that's my grace and that's grace in our lives but uh, this morning we're going to talk about grace but we're going to talk about another thing too it's, it's, uh, about what wants to have dominion in your life control over you um, I'll just preface this by saying God doesn't want to have dominion over you. And those that believe that God wants to have total control and dominion over you, you're sadly mistaken. You're believing a lie from the enemy. God wants us to give, us, give our hearts to Him willingly. Not because we have to or because we're going to die and go to hell, but because we want to. Because it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance, not the severity. And with that out of the way, my definition this morning is of dominion. And it means sovereignty or control. There's many other meanings to it, but sovereignty and control are, are probably the two best pictures of that for this word this morning. And the enemy wants to have dominion over you. The world wants to have dominion over you. Your flesh wants to have dominion over you. But your true man person who you really are, your spirit man, submits to God not because it has to, but because it wants to. We submit to God because we want to. And that's what sets us free. And that's why God gives us grace in times of struggle. That's why God gives us grace in times when we need. But we need to see sometimes that God's grace has no limits. We can't limit it in ourselves. And yet we try. We try to limit God's grace. We try to put our rules and regulations, our dominion on other people and how they should live, rather than turning them over to the Lord and letting Him lead them. That's why the church looks so ineffective today, because we, not me, but the church as a whole, I'm a part of the body, in a lot of areas is, has stumbled in the fact that it wants to have dominion. It wants to live like the world. It's believed a lie. It, it, it's used God's grace as a piece of toilet paper and then tried to clothe itself with that dirty, soiled toilet paper. Now, I'm not trying to give anybody any gross ideas or gross thoughts or pictures in your mind, but we can see how if we use grace in the wrong way, it becomes dirty. It's ineffective, ineffective. It's not effective. I'll find the right word. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, 
at any rate, we have a bad idea of what God is in our life and who God is in our life. We believe sometimes that we've got to do certain things in order to see an end result. And we can't move God in that way. God doesn't operate in that way. God operates through faith. But faith doesn't come without submitting. And But that doesn't mean that God wants to mean God, God's not trying to control us. Okay, I'm going to get that out of the way. And I praise Him for that. It's, it's by our free will. That's why He gave us a free will. And we submit to Him. We learn about the law of love. And it comes in our lives, the law of grace. There's laws in, at, at work in the spirit realm. And if we tap into those laws, we become better people for it. And I just thank God for that this morning. And uh, in Romans 6.14 it says, For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. We're under grace. We're not bound by law. We're not bound by religiousness. We're not bound by sin. There is no dominion over us. No one has dominion over us. Nothing has dominion over us if we're set free. Are you set free? <laughs> Glory to God. Are you under grace? <laughs> grace covers. Grace propels. Grace will propel you to greater things. And we begin to understand how large it is. And, and, and how... The grace of God shapes our lives. There's many aspects of grace. It's not just one thing. You can't just say it's one thing. It's it, And it's all flown from the heart of the Father, and we have to remember that. So when we remember it in that fashion, we're not we're not going to go out and we're not going to use it as toilet paper. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna look at at God's grace seriously. We're not going to be flippant about it. And, and we need to we need to see that God has more grace than we can understand. Wherever sin abounds, grace abounds that much more. But that we don't use that as an excuse. Did something come out of my mouth. <laughs> something hard must have been from my cup. Praise the Lord. I share everything. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. And then uh, in Hebrews four sixteen it says. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and, and find grace in the time of need. I need grace every day. So I know I can draw near to the throne of grace. And I need mercy every day because there isn't a day that doesn't go by that I, something doesn't come up and, and I stumble in some way because I'm a man, I'm not perfect. And I thank God for that grace. I thank God. And, and, and that grace shelters us from condemnation. But we have to make a decision. We have to make a conscious decision that we'll receive this by faith. And that we, we have to remember that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And things of the flesh are discerned through the flesh. And if we allow our flesh to try to discern this, it's not going to work. It just absolutely will not. So we have to remember that that we're in an ocean of grace by faith in what Jesus has did, um, has done, has did. He's did those things. They're done. <laughs> Glory to God. You think I just learned English, didn't you? <laughs> Don't joke. I praise the Lord for that TT. Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. At any rate, uh, we have to allow God's grace to permeate our lives. In every area of our lives, like I said, grace isn't just one thing. It's many things. And we have to get out of our box and stop thinking that it's only for when we sin. Grace propels us forward. Grace gives us strength. Grace gives us the words to speak life into others. Glory to God. And that's just a little bit of it. You know, what I saw was beyond vast. Beyond vast. The grace I saw, you could fit the planet Earth right in the middle of it. You could fit the solar system right in the middle of it. That's how vast God's grace is. 
and we need to look at that in awe. We need to begin to see the bigness of God. We need to see the bigger picture. We can't fit God in our boxes because God's not like us. We're like Him. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. I feel the Holy Spirit breathing on that one. And, but that's for another time. But we're like Him. He doesn't come to our level. He raises us up to His level. And, and we have to remember that. And so I just release over you right now, all who are listening, grace. Grace. That you would see through the eyes of God that He would show you His grace. Glory in the name of Jesus. And in uh, Titus 2, 11 and 12, it says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness, worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. I think, really, in in, uh, in the United States, at any rate, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of a uh, hedonistic, Greek-minded culture. And I know that in the Western world, it's, it's kind of like that. And there's a lot of secret sin. There's a lot of sin underneath the surface that, that, that people are living and they're saying, nobody's going to ever see me living this way. Or I'll, I'll fool them. But we never fool God. And we, we need to also keep that in mind that God is a righteous God. God is a sovereign God. God is a holy God. God does not change. And we have to be sober about this. We have to look at we have to look at and towards God in, in the light of who He is. He's the creator of all things. Jesus died for us that we might live. And and when we, we selfishly do things that put a wall between us and God, and it's us that put the wall, not God. It's us. It's the actions that we do. It's the secret things that we hide from other people instead of <laughs> try to hide from God. Instead of getting before Him and receiving that grace to overcome those things. There's grace in our lives to overcome. That's another aspect of grace. And, and what comes to me is, is uh, people who are bound in different areas of their lives. That if they would take that bondage and hand it to Jesus, he would exchange the grace to overcome that. And many people have done that. I know in my own life, the addictions and the, to just, I'll just use pornography. Um, I was highly addicted to pornography. I was looking at it several times a day sometimes. And uh, at any rate, when I got delivered from that, I got delivered. I got the grace in my life to say no when the temptation arises. I don't have to give in to it. There was a point where I couldn't say no to it. I had to do it. I had to do it. And I tried to relish in it and I couldn't. I felt dirty and slimy. I felt horrible. But I couldn't stop myself. I was bound to be doing it. I was addicted. And uh, thank God for grace. Because once that grace was poured onto me and, and, and the deliverance came, I had the strength to say no by the grace of God. And that's a temptation I'm, I'm sure I'll be fighting for the rest of my life. But as long as I know I've got God's grace on this, I can say no. You know, a temptation isn't a sin. A temptation is just a temptation. Every man's tempted. Jesus was tempted. But he gives us the strength to say no. And I praise him for that word. I praise him that I could share that with you guys. Because there's people addicted to things, whatever it is in their lives, if they choose to, it's a choice you have to make, okay, to believe that you've been delivered. And we've been delivered from everything in our lives. We just come to that point where we look at that mountain and we say, move to the sea in the name of Jesus. Just a mustard seed of faith will move that mountain. But that doesn't mean that the temptation to be in that place doesn't come back from time to time. Um, you know, somebody might have addiction to 
methamphetamines, fighting addiction to methamphetamines. I thank God that somewhere along the line he gave me the grace to stop doing drugs. You know, and I wasn't walking with the Lord at the time, but I didn't want to have it around my wife and kids. That, not to say I didn't stumble along the way there, but praise the Lord, it never really affected into the family, only my attitudes. But uh, we, could, we could get into that at another time, but there are people that are bound into things and they, and they see those things and they say, I'm going to overcome this. Are they overcoming it in their own strength? Or are they overcoming it through God's grace? And they don't overcome those things. They don't stop doing those things because they're attempting it in their own flesh, their own power. You have to throw those, you have to throw those things onto the Lord. Cast your cares upon Him because He cares for you. My paraphrase. If we cast those things upon the Lord and we trust Him, we're going to overcome them. Are we going to stumble along the way? If we realize that we're walking in His grace, we don't have to. I can say that we won't. I thank God that it's been almost three years for me. And I don't believe I have to. I don't believe I need to. I don't put that temptation in front of me. So, if it was the... When it does come my way, I try to run away from it. And so we have grace to overcome things, and we don't have to fall back into those. And so I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. I just bless your day. I thank you, Lord God, for your mercy, for your grace, for your love upon us, for who you are in our lives, Jesus, that you do give us the grace to overcome. That in that strength, we can throw ourselves on your mercy and receive mercy in the times of need. And I just thank you for that. I bless you for that. I just love my brothers and sisters and I thank you for them again. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory. I don't know if this fog's going to get out there this morning. I'm going to yield here. I was just exercising my fingers, stretching them, because uh, they're just, I don't got anything in front of me, so I don't know what I'm going to play this morning.
him for what he's doing in your life and then step out in faith and begin to worship him they who worship God they who worship the Father they who worship Jesus they who worship with the Spirit of God they must worship him in spirit and in truth and and that only comes by allowing the Holy Spirit to filter into you the life of Jesus you can't do it on your own. You, God doesn't want dominion over you. He wants you to submit to His sovereignty and to realize who you are in Him, but He wants to set you free in that. He doesn't want to have control over you. He doesn't want to make every move a move of a robot. He set you free. In Jesus' name, I just declare that freedom over you. Freedom reigns in this place. And that's right in there. Freedom reigns in me. And release out of yourself a revival. Let revival come to you. We'll see you. Bye. <laughs>